Switzerland. It's known for its armed neutrality. It's a mountainous small country sandwiched in the center of Europe surrounded by major powers. When World War I started, Switzerland already had an impressive defensive strategy that involved the extensive use of its topography. Moving an army into Switzerland requires traveling through long, winding, mountainous roads, which are easily blocked and defended, with the mountains lending themselves to the building of virtually indestructible bunkers. Switzerland's policy of armed neutrality served them well. Switzerland shared borders with two Entente powers, France and Italy, and two central powers, Germany and Austria-Hungary. Both sides drew up plans to attack the other through Switzerland. Germany's Schlieffen plan was designed to flank the French through a smaller, more poorly defended nation. But Switzerland was ruled out due to its defenses, leaving Belgium the preferred route for the German army. The French drafted a plan in the winter of 1916-1917, Plan H. This would rush 30 French divisions into Switzerland should the nation be used as a route by Germany to attack the industrial city of Lyon. Both sides had periods of tension that Switzerland would be used against them, leading the Swiss army to fluctuate states of readiness throughout the war. The Swiss army could muster an impressive 250,000 soldiers with another 200,000 in supporting roles. Impressive for a nation with a World War I population of just over 3,800,000. However, no major operation would be undertaken on Swiss territory, though there were over 1,000 incidents of border violations by foreign troops, mostly by accident, as the Swiss border mountain ranges can zigzag in and out of territories. Mountain troops from Italy and Austria-Hungary frequently engaged along shared Swiss borders. The conflict did create internal strife within Switzerland. Switzerland has a diverse population with citizens speaking German, Italian, and French, with many of those citizens favoring the sides of the nations who shared their language. Further issues include men being called into service for long periods of time, with little compensation for their lost wages. The increase in military expenses also saw an increase in inflation during the war. However, some industries like the metals industry, farming, timber, and even watchmaking saw a rise in profits and exports to both belligerent camps. The famous Swiss banking industry also grew during the conflict. Switzerland's neutrality also allowed it to play a significant humanitarian role during the war. It was a haven for refugees and revolutionaries, including artists and pacifists, most famously the Bolsheviks and Dadaists. Dadaism was a political and artistic movement using art to critique war and capitalist society. These groups also caused the government to fear a Soviet-style Bolshevik revolution. In November of 1918, there was a national strike, which the federal government swiftly responded to, arresting the leaders and crushing the action after only three days. Switzerland's greatest humanitarian action during the war could easily be the acceptance of 68,000 British, French, and German prisoners of war who needed treatment. They were treated in mountain resorts, and they were prisoners of war who were too wounded to ever recover and fight again. They would sit out the war in Switzerland. The agreement was recognized by all sides of the conflict and was organized by the Red Cross. All right, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this little brief on Switzerland during World War I. Feel free to add anything in the comments section. Liking and subscribing helps the channel grow. And I hope you have a nice rest of your day.